Hello everyone and welcome to another high low game of Age of Empires today. Toronto's been hit by a heat wave and so windows open, fans on. I'm sitting down in my underwear, uh, <laughs> TMI, to watch Hart playing as the Incas in red take on Mr. Yo playing as the Sicilians in blue. Now all the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings with duck duck goose and scouts and try to get their butts up to feudal age ASAP. Why don't we take a look at the Civ match we will be watching today? Now, the Incas are the quintessential counter-civilization. Is your opponent going to go cavalry? Well, then the Incas can rely on their first unique unit, the Kamayuk. This is a ranged infantry unit that carries a very, very long spear and comes with a pretty massive attack bonus against cavalry units of all kinds. Is your opponent going infantry? Well, then you can rely on your other unique unit, the Slinger. This is an archer unit that comes with a pretty big attack bonus against infantry and which can be upgraded to get an even bigger plus one attack boost. Ooh, I thought the Ibex was going to be a little bit stubborn like the deer on the map, but no, so far Hart having a pretty good time pushing these Ibex. Now, will your opponent go archers? Well, then the Incas can rely on their skirmishers, which not only get all the upgrades from the archery range, the blacksmith and the university, but can also be upgraded to have no minimum range whatsoever, which does remove one of their biggest weaknesses. Now they make the Incan army last a little bit longer on the battlefield. No, they don't give the warriors Viagra. What they do give them is fabric shields. This is an upgrade that allows the Kamayuks, the Slingers, and the Eagle Warriors to all get extra melee and pierce armor that help build and support their military industrial complex. All Incan military units cost less and less food as the game goes on. 10% less food in Dark Age, all the way up to 25% less food in Imperial. They do start the game for those eagle-eyed viewers who saw with a free llama underneath the town center, which doesn't really sound like much, but it does give you either an extra unit to scout with or, uh, of course, a hundred extra food. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, uh, I always get distracted when I'm going through my Civ intros when these, uh, these deer, these uh, whatever deer variants, let's call them. Ooh, the last one is actually a deer. Always get all stubborn and try to, you know avoid the inevitable death the inevitable butchering and hacking that the villagers ultimately do uh you know villagers always bet on villagers versus the wildlife in this game now let's keep going the incas their buildings cost 15 percent less stone their houses support 10 population instead of five which does free up a little bit of extra wood in the early game for a bit more army and their villagers are harder to raid because starting in castle age they do benefit from infantry blacksmith upgrades and by the way if you take a look at the top left of your screen, you'll notice the Incas get all infantry blacksmith upgrades. Ooh, I want to go talk about the Sicilians, but I got to see the deer. I have a special spot in my heart for these stubborn, stubborn deer. Although it looks like this should be a fairly clean pull, and there you go. I say stubborn heart proves me immediately wrong. Let's take a look at the Sicilians, a civilization whose strength flows from their defensive static, static defensive structures. To start with, if you take a look at the top right of your screen, you'll notice... The Sicilians do start the game with 100 extra stone, which is amazing because they do build town centers twice as fast as normal. They build castles 50% faster than normal. And starting in Feudal Age, they can build their unique structure, the Donjon. Think of this as a mini castle that gains HP and armor as the game progresses. And starting in Castle Age does fire multiple arrows, even when ungarrisoned, similar to a castle. Now, Donjons, like their sister structures, the Bulgarian Krepos, can also be used to train the unique unit of their civilization, which in this case is the Sergeant. This is a medium infantry unit with great base armor whose HP actually increases from Feudal to Castle Age and is one of the only two unique units that you can actually train in the Feudal Age. Now, these Sergeants, if that's not enough for you, they can be used to build and repair the very Donjons that give them life. Now, unlike the Bulgarian Krepos, a donjon can also be used to train spearman line units and can count as the prerequisite building to build a stable or an archery range, which means that the Sicilians early on can ignore and avoid building a barracks. Although, remember, barracks always a pretty good idea to have eventually. Now, if you find yourself in dire need of a lot of army uh, very, very quickly, the Sicilians can call a first crusade where each one of these, each town center, spawns five sergeants up to a maximum of five town centers and therefore 25 sergeants just appear in the blink of an eye on your screen now to protect those sergeants on the battlefield because they are still infantry units and because they are so heavily armored they do move pretty darn slowly to protect them 
Sicilian knights and cavaliers can be upgraded to get extra armor. All Sicilian infantry, cavalry, and archer units take less bonus damage, and all Sicilian units on the whole can be upgraded to be even more resistant to conversion. Now to feed their big hungry military, Sicilians do have the most bountiful farms in the game. When a farm upgrade is researched, it more than doubles the amount of food added to a farm, so... If we're lucky enough to see this game going to Imperial, <laughs> some of these uh, villagers may not be so lucky. As a villager, two villagers, a militiaman. Ooh, you're not making it to Imperial Age. Two villagers dead. One militiaman will not see the rise of the sun. But if we're lucky enough to see this game go into Imperial, if Mr. Yo is, uh, you know... Uh, upgrades, what's the word I'm looking for? Upgrades his farms to the maximum extent possible. Well, then a fully upgraded Sicilian farm comes with over a thousand food, which does save you a little bit of wood because you do need to reseed that farm less uh, frequently than normally. So one with houses that need to be built less frequently, one with farms that need to be seeded and reseeded less frequently. We'll see where the hell the battle goes for now. Very uncharacteristic. Mr. Yo loses two villagers. So our Inca off to a very, very aggressive start. Both players are in feudal. I will, usually this is the part where I say both players are sitting at the same villager count, but that's not true. Hard having killed two villagers is now ahead. Good time for us as the players disengage to look at the map and see what's going on. Primary gold for our Inca right secure to the back behind a forest. I love the location of this. Stone also not terrible, not uh, really in the middle or forward, but kind of off the beaten track. He's got a bit of additional gold to the back. He's got a bit of additional gold to the front. And where is his extra stone to the right, uh, to the top rather of his uh, base. So a bit of a triangle shaped base with gold to the bottom left, bottom right, and stone to the top right. And then additional resources safe inside this little nook protected by four forests. So wow, a pretty good base spawn if, uh, if I had to say for our Inca. Let's see how well Mr. Yo's base looks right after we look at this battle where... The Sicilian gets revenge and takes the kill lead. Does gun down a whole bunch of military here, and now he's going after more. Will he pivot? There is an eagle here that he can pick off. Eagles with their pierce armor are very, very easy for melee units to pick off, but there's two archers here. What's the HP on these three scouts? Why is he being so hesitant? Oh, yeah. All you need to do, when you wonder why a pro player doesn't take a fight... Just highlight the unit and look at its HP, and that'll tell you everything you need to know. Mr. Yo's primary gold and primary stone annoyingly placed in the forward position. That is very annoying. He's already walled out his primary stone. He's got additional gold to the back. Where's his uh, third pile of gold and second stone? Very uh, Wow. Four out of the five resource patches are in the forward position. Like Hart, he also has four forests, but unlike Hart, the location of these forests kind of annoying and making it very hard to wall off now what he has that hard doesn't is two big forests in the rear position and i guess some shorefish if he wants to take advantage of some of that Ooh, nearby source of food as he now gets the first villager kill but loses two scouts in exchange for that so not exactly the uh, the free kill that he would want but yeah one dead villager at least he gets a little bit of revenge on the Inca for getting uh, such an early and annoying and aggravating kill. I mean, losing two villagers so early on, that's gotta hurt. Even though Mysterio is keeping very much pace with his opponent so far, still down now just one villager. But I suspect that's just because Hart's villager is midway through training. And once he trains, he will be down two. And Hart is here, push pressing the issue. As what is Tinkle Tinkling? A Spearman here. Tinkle Tinkling that house to death. A very annoying set of nooks here for these archers. They can go into here. They can go into here. They can pivot this way. We'll see how Mysterio decides to defend. For now, it is skirmishers with fletching. Okay. Which, uh, let's take a look at Hart's army composition. Four skirmishers with fletching. Five, rather. Sorry. Should be enough to shoo away this entire Incan army once he catches wind of it. And besides, we are fighting on a uh, what looks like a, a haunted burial ground. And so nobody wants to take a fight there. Uh, if you've seen Pet Cemetery as a child, or as an adult even, uh, you know, be, be very careful of where you choose to do things, where you conduct your business, and what you decide to do anywhere there's a cemetery nearby. Ooh, I don't know about this. There's three eagles now with this army. Skirmishers have minimum range, so if the eagles can close, and by the way, they move much faster than these skirmishers, 
These are not Lithuanian skirmishers. And if they can close, they can cause some damage. But Mysterio knows that. Trains two fresh scouts. Mysterio, by the way, has zero gold. <laughs> okay. Our Inca has eight villagers mining gold. Mysterio has zero. So his villager allocation is... Uh, I'm seeing the allocation of 28 villagers, even though it says he's got 35. Because a whole bunch of them are moving around. Now he's got some villagers on goal to the forward. So he must be pretty happy that the Incan army is down south. It does give an, uh, an, him an opportunity to mine gold, but never mind. Pulls two of the three villagers, gets another stable up. I say another because he's training scouts, so we know he definitely has a stable. Let's take a look at what the players have, by the way. Two stables in archery range. The OG barracks and a blacksmith. No market for Mr. Yo just yet. He has to contend with this big army. He needs every single two by four of wood. He needs every chicken McNugget of food, every ounce of gold that he's got to train, do whatever the hell he can to try to get rid of this army. And Hart being the one putting on the aggression on the other side of the map, safe and secure at home, mining to his heart's content, is already going up to Castle Age. Look at Mr. Yo's resources. He's got 100 food and 50 gold. Nothing queued behind this villager. Oh, no. Arinka is going to hit... <laughs> he's going to hit Castle Age. Uh, very, very much ahead of his opponent. I'm trying not to shout cast. I'm trying not to uh, exaggerate. But when your opponent is already halfway to Castle Age and you've got 180 food, you yeah, you need to do now to Heart what Heart was doing to you. And that's exactly what Mr. Yo is doing. He's putting on all the aggression now. Back home. I hope he's not training any more scout. Oh, he's getting bloodlines. I mean, that's a good upgrade to get, but it does take food away from going up to Castle Age. Oh, excuse me. I think my microphone just... Uh... Sorry about that. I think my microphone muted there for a second. Yeah, Mr. Yo. Oh, no, he's spending even more food on upgrades. <laughs> Does he expect his opponent to uh, continue this feudal age aggression? He's going to discover very soon, and by very soon, I mean literally when I finish this sentence, that his opponent is in castle age. And what does he do? Immediately retreats home. Okay, he's sacrificing these uh, skirmishers. But I don't know what Mr. Yo can do here in terms of taking on an engagement. That being said, Hart... Rushing up to the next age. Didn't exactly hit it with enough resources to do, I guess, what he really wants to do. And so he is still fighting with a feudal age army. But in 18 seconds, these are going to be uh, crossbows. And down go all the skirmishers. Heart says, damn your counter unit. I don't give an ink and butt. And I am just going to gun them down. And now he's moving forward. Mr. Yo. 300 food. He needs 450 more food before he can even think about clicking up to the next stage. Another stable, another scout, another scout. He is just spending all of his food income right now. Now, you, usually, there's that market, by the way. So at least he, once he gets more gold, he'll be able to buy some food. He's also getting wheelbarrow. Oh, man. Mysterio is very confident that he can hold this. Now, what I was about to say is usually uh, there's a situation that occurs when one player hits Imperial and the other player is still in Castle Age. And then I say, you know, the, the Castle Age player usually has a decision to make. Do I double down in Castle Age? Do I just try to outnumber my opponent out, muscle him with sheer quantity? Or do I start saving up the resources, which for, uh, what, 95% of the civilizations is 1,000 food, 800 gold? and just try to get up to Imperial myself. In this case, we're having a very interesting situation where Mr. Yo is now clicking up to Castle Age after having spent a lot of food on upgrades. That being said, he has spent the food on upgrades, and so his scouts have 65 HP. They're at a plus one, plus one. Uh-oh. I honestly don't know who takes this. Okay, it looks like by sheer volume alone, our Feudal Age army of roided-up scouts is going to take this, but it's not without cost. There's a lot of dead blue bodies on the dance floor. More and more are being added. But as the crossbow numbers continue to fall, yeah, they become less and less effective. So mystery. <laughs> I don't know what to call that strategy. I thought for sure he was in a spot of trouble there, having bought 
a upgraded his units all with food related uh, upgrades and costs. Ultimately, though, he is going to hit Castle Age. He wipes out the entire offensive force of the Inca. Now, remember, the Inca's discount is on food. Crossbows cost zero food. So these are all full price crossbows. You are not playing against the Mayans here, whose uh, archers become cheaper and cheaper. And down goes. Although I guess this uh, skirmisher, the Mayan skirmisher, is not cheaper, right? It's just their uh, archer crossbow arbalest that become cheaper. I guess that one skirmisher was a little bit cheaper for the Incas. And now Mysterio's in Castle Age as well. He's down 11 villagers, though. So Hart used his time to build another town center, pump out another army of crossbows, and take a 12 villager lead over his opponent, but his opponent's doubling down on cavalry. Light cav husbandry. He's even getting more armor upgrades for them. That is a ballsy move against the Incas, whose unique unit carries an incredibly long hoplite-like spear. And Mysterio is going to have to contend, I'm assuming, with that unit very, very shortly if he shows his hand that he has gone full on cavalry because Hart is already placing a castle Mysterio with a center of the map and a middle of the road siege workshop and a monastery because now he's going to try to start gobbling up the relics. Of course, he is. Hart, by the way, has he built a monastery? Yeah, he has. Three monks, but no relics just yet. And of course, right as I say that, one relic, two relics get shuttled over to the monastery. Ooh, Mysterio sees the castle. Okay, so he knows he's got to be a little bit more careful. He's getting knights now. A mangonel as well. So Mr. Yo is wasting no time. He is not training more villagers except for one at a time. No second town, uh, sorry, sorry, no third town center for him. So both players sitting at two and right as I say that, our Inca builds a third. But Mr. Yo is now down 18 villagers and he's down in army supply. So Hart has used his time very, very effectively in Castle Age. Unfortunately for him, he's gonna have to contend with a Mangonel now and a lot of his army, the vast majority, of 32 army supply is 21 crossbows. That being said, Kamiuks are about to pop out five of them already. Interesting that he decided to delete the house instead of just garrisoning and ungarrisoning the crossbows. That was a very interesting move. But I guess when your houses support 10 population, one house isn't really the end of the world. And here we go. Mr. Yo pops in. Mr. Yo sees what's there. And Mr. Yo immediately pops out. And they, you thought I was exaggerating about the length of their spears. Look at the size of those ridiculous spears. Good attack round. Good attack round by Mr. O. Second one also clips three of those crossbows, gets a whole bunch of HP damage. But now he's lost his big death dealer. He's lost his mangonel, needs to train another one. Not exactly a cheap unit. And he's down 21 villagers now. Down 10 army supply. Now, usually I would say he's down 10 army supply, but he's got a whole bunch of knights. That being said, the Kamayuk, look at that attack bonus, plus eight against cavalry. And by the way, it comes with range, so it can't even reach the one scout that was standing here. Oh, is this not walled off? <laughs> okay, could have fooled me. That looked very walled off to me. This we know isn't walled off because Mr. Yo spent a bunch of time busting his way through it. But this is 25 cavalry units that are not accomplishing very much. Who's kidding who? Our Inca has gathered two relics. Mr. Yo, luckily for him, has literally one, two right next to his monastery. He must have seen this one as well. And the third relic that should be out on the map, I no longer see it, which means somewhere there is a monk, red or blue, returning home with a relic. And we'll see. So far, it looks like it's going to be two to two with Mysterio getting those two relics that are right next to his uh, monastery. There you are. There you are. So it's going to be three relics to two. Heart beating Mysterio at his own game here as he loses another monk. And his relics are in the very forward position, too. Very, very exposed. Mysterio's army supply is growing, growing, growing. He's got plus two, plus two. He is investing heavily into the upgrades. Takes another. Fantastic attack round there. Fantastic for Mr. Yo. Absolutely terrible for Hart, who plops down a second castle. Has had enough of this kind of, but not really, aggression out of our Sicilian, who now takes his anger out on a bunch of farms. And here we go. Looks like we're about to see an engagement. 
two monks fall villager falls the mangonel behind us are gonna have free reign to do whatever the hell they want it looks like the knights are falling look at all the blue bodies on the dance floor holy moly the kamayuk oh but he's losing a lot of army as hard as well another good attack round there out of the mangonel but now the mangonel is exposed gonna get poked and prodded by these long ass sticks to death and it does and now Mysterio is down almost 15 or 16 army count and he's down 25 villagers that was not the decisive engagement that he needed or wanted and now even though again he's got the better unit the knight uh the more mobile the stronger tankier unit I don't know what he can really do here his army supply is wow he's down two and a half times army supply that's all you need to know at the moment but you know what if he catches little bands of units from around the map we'll see both players are heading up to imperial it looks like mr yo is going to reach it just a few seconds ahead of his opponent as he continues circling here to the north not too sure what he expects to find here the scout is going to find nothing but death does escape well oh, one more poke and that knight would have uh, that uh, light cavalry would have died a third castle going up for our inca so he's going to try to uh do with the Incas, what the Viper did yesterday with the Malay, and just create a whole bunch of castles and start spamming a whole bunch of Kamiuks. We're going up to 31 Kamiuks. Always love to see these units from the Incas, by the way. Just absolutely love to see them. And now, <laughs> Mr. Yo is mixing in sergeants? Okay. Three base armor is a pretty damn good stat for that unit. Let's take a look at the numbers while the uh, players disengage and the sergeants take down an outpost Ooh, a few scorpions as well looks like they're kind of derping out there four scorpions okay the bane of all infantry and weak ranged units that being said the kamiuks are on the high ground they will close and once they close it's bye bye scorpions you need a meat shield you can't <laughs> you just abandon the scorpions Town center full of eight, nine villagers will fire on these units. Castle is going up. Heart discovers it. And now both players in four, three, two, one. Boom, are in Imperial. Castle does goes up, does go up. Now, unfortunately for the Kamuks like Step Lancers, because they have one minimum range, they are automatically outside of the dead zone that murder hole radius that would kill any or rather keep safe any other unit because as we all know pro players are allergic to researching murder holes <gasps> we're getting a first crusade one two but he's only got three town centers no no you got to finish these in 20 seconds of course they remember they built town centers twice as fast so oh but the the crusade's ending in eight seconds seven seconds he's gonna have four will he have five town yeah okay so 25 sergeants will appear automatically five underneath each town center and now all of a sudden the sicilian army count has jumped up to 30 but mr yo the one thing he can't change is the fact that he's still down 30 villagers behind this we're getting archery ranges elite kamayuk what are the archery ranges for did he see the uh, first crusade elite sergeant <laughs> the elite sergeant is a pretty badass unit i guess the, the, the kamiuks can stack one behind the other just like all uh, ranged melee units but when you're up facing an opponent whose stats are going to jump in three seconds to four base armor look at that insanity six melee six pierce armor and look at that blue nose that these guys can stack so of course deletes his own house to get a uh, nice surround on them but they just run away it is for slingers okay so he somehow he must have seen the first crusade being called and knows that these slingers which come with an attack bonus of plus 10 are going to be useful here and here we go i honestly don't know who takes this fight i'm going to say that for the second time this game i suspect the sergeants just because they're so freaking tanky but let's see two of them peel off to the south to go after the treble see if that's a wise move yeah, the sergeants are just plowing their way through this, but ultimately numbers and more and more reinforcing slingers is enough. Two sergeants get the treb. They try to join the battle, but then they reconsider it. Will they get the treb before the slinger, or the Kamiuks get them? One more attack. Down goes the second treb. Now Hart does have a third. Where are you? Okay, he's going to go after the relics, maybe? 
Wow, what an epic, epic bloody battle for both players there. I figured the sergeants would do well. I didn't think that the... Uh, what, one thing I didn't factor in was Hart's never-ending reinforcement of slingers. And now he's going up to 23 slingers. So these sergeants are going to have a very difficult time. Their armor will be great against the Kamiuks, but seven melee, eight pierce armor is ridiculous. That eight pierce armor, by the way, will get rid of almost all of the attack of the slinger. But then the bonus damage comes in 10 extra bonus damage per volley from each individual sling. And Monsieur's is going to lose control of his relics. The castle is an amazingly placed castle. King of the Hill Castle. But no more relics for him. Villagers immediately move to repair. Mr. Yo is now down. Now that the crusade has been called. Now that the crusade has been quashed. And absolutely destroyed. By the Incan army. Mr. Yo finds himself in the same spot he was. Before the calling of the crusade. He's down a huge amount of villagers. Although now it's the, actually down only 18. But army count, look at the army count. 24 for Mr. Yo, 60 for our Inca, who is completely at the 200 population limit. Mr. Yo not even at 150. So he's going to have to take an amazing engagement. He's going to have to get lucky and kill some of these trebs. Are there any villagers repairing? No, there are not. So he might get one or two of these trebs if he can keep his castle alive. Scorpions move forward. What's happening down here? One Kamiuk looks like he wants to kill as many villagers as possible, but in comes the Incan army. Sergeants are ridiculously slow. Not not exactly Teutonic Knight level slow, but they still move a little bit slower than one tile a second. There you go. Monsieur does get one of the trebs, even though Hart pulled three villagers to repair it. But the castle's already down to its last 20%, and Hearth is making an issue of it. He does not want these traps to keep firing on his. And so he moves forward, gets them, and then retreats. Brilliant move out of Hearth. The only risk to his army here are those two trebs. He gets them, and now Mr. Yo, he's getting blast furnace. Got heavy scorpion. Okay, let's see it. Where are the scorpions? They are moving forward. Ooh, the castle does fall, though. And now it's 57 army count to five. 60 to 4. Oh my goodness. His opponent literally has 10 times more army count. Oh, and Mysterio, things are not looking good here. Now his scorpions are under attack. Now, if these were Roman scorpions with one minimum range instead of two, yeah, that was a foregone conclusion. If they were Romans with a minimum range of one instead of two, they could take on these Kamiuks because the Kamiuk also has one range. But because the minimum range is two, the Kamiuk can eventually close and without taking any damage from his counter scorpion, just kill that scorpion. Donjon fails to go up. Wow, Hart just absolutely steamrolling with that massive Incan army. The Incas generally struggle to explode out of their base. They're an amazing defensive civilization, but defense is not going to win you Age of Empires unless you just stand there like a rock, Bob Seeger style and your opponent just expends their entire, entire bankroll trying to crash you down, and you can't. And by the way, we've seen Mr. Yo do that. He is the king of holds, in my opinion. But in this game, he just could not muster enough of an army, and that first crusade that he called was amazing. I was a little bit worried that he wasn't going to get the second, uh, the fourth and the fifth town centers up, but he did in the nick of time, even building them twice as fast as normal, just barely seconds in advance, managed to get those town centers up and get 25 army supply. Now, did he need to engage with the Kamiuks up here? That is a different question. He did have Trebs breathing down his neck at that point, even though he was the first to reach Imperial, even though he does die with so many resources, I should say so many trash resources. Wow. He just couldn't stop the flow of the Incan military. We just kept pumping out more and more and more units. How many castles at the end of the day for our Inca? Four castles. Four archery ranges, that's all he needed. And Mysterio, it, I, it, was it because he lost the two villagers in the beginning of the game? In the forest here? Is that really what caused this loss? Two villagers? Some people really do believe that if you lose villagers in the early stages of the game, you really need to resign ASAP. Others, like me, I don't think it's as relevant, especially not in these higher ELO games. At the end of the day, he did end the game with only 14 fewer villagers. And that's including a bunch of them that just died here. So if you add back the three, that's basically like 
three, 11 or 10 villagers deficit. 137 is not that, uh, not that bad when you're already in the three figures. But ultimately, the main, main thing he couldn't compete with was just the military industrial complex. He had nothing. Mysterio had two siege workshops, three siege workers, a third. Oh, it's over here. He had the donjons to train the sergeants. He had three of them, but his gold was running out. He lost control of the pile up here, lost control of his, by the way, primary stone he never took. And just the fact that four out of his five resources were all in the forward position, secondary stone, primary stone, secondary gold. And uh, where was the, I guess the primary gold he already mined out, but the four out of the five resource patches that he had were very much in the exposed position and Hart just pushed in literally right into the middle of them. Stone to the south, gold to the north, and Mysterio just, uh, you, you can't. Your opponent now has map control. He has the momentum. He has an army. You've got seven army supply, which is about to turn into six, five, four army supply. And that four army supply is going to be one like, by the way, where the hell is this light cavalry? Okay. <laughs> uh, he got his one kill, I guess, as a villager. Yeah, he got a villager kill, and then he can just kind of hang out for the rest of the game. Okay. It is what it is. Let's take a look at the stats. 94 Kamiuks, 54 Elite Sergeants. I don't know who takes this fight. I actually want to compare the stats for a for a very quick second here. So the Kamiuk base attack of an 8, the Sergeant 11. So 12 to 15. But look at the armor. 5 on a Kamiuk is not bad. This is where the fabric shields, the Viagra, comes into play for the Incas. 5 melee armor to 7. One range, of course. Is it the same 2 second attack delay? It's got to be. They're both infantry. And the sergeant just a little bit more, a little bit more HP. So he attacks stronger, has more armor, has more HP. So clearly the better unit, but not really that much better uh, when it comes to the fact that these guys can stack. So like step lancers, basically, they can just stack one behind the other. So if you got two of them attacking one sergeant, that sergeant is basically dead. And man, we saw that up here. That was an absolute epic, epic battle. And the reinforcing slingers from heart were a brilliant move. That plus 10 attack bonus against infantry just shredding through what sergeants remained after they killed all of those Kamiuks. PKPM right at the beginning of the game for heart. PKPM eh, early ish for Mystery O. You know what? For, for a player who was down economy the entire game, being down, what is this, like 12, 13 percent in economy is not terrible. He did get a little bit more wood. Everything else goes to our Inca. A little bit, a little tiny bit more food, a lot more gold, and a lot more stone. This is this is the GG right here. This is where you can't recover from. Relic gold, not really playing a role, but 900 or so different. Conversion's not playing a role. Raising's not really that high in this game. Let's take a look at the kill count. It's very similar total kill counts. Our Inca killed 156 to 146, but he killed less military because he killed 30 villagers to the five. Of his opponent. So Mysterio actually ends up killing 141 military units. Hart ends up killing 126. So 15 fewer military kills, but too many villagers and ultimately 14 villagers down. Mysterio loses control of a lot of his resources. This is seven patches of stone and four patches of gold that he can no longer mine from. And I don't think he's got any other resources left. He's just got his one secondary or tertiary, whatever it was, gold patch to the back. And that's it. I don't even think there's any more neutral resources. They're all being taken by our Inca, who has just swallowed up the map. And with it... Oh, no, never mind. Look at that, Mr. Yo. Does uh, our Inca see this? Yeah, of course. Sorry, I didn't see the outpost here on the left. Of course he sees it. Okay, so Mr. Yo is taking stone, which will allow him to build more and more donjons. He does have enough stone for a don another donjon, which will allow him to build more sergeants. But sergeants cost gold. And that is one resource he doesn't have. And with the lack of gold, with the absolute destruction of his army multiple times, once up here and now down here, Mysterio just doesn't have enough fuel in the tank to keep on going. He sees the writing on the wall, decides to tap out to live to fight another day. And it is Hart, our Inca, who takes this game with the absolute epic push, push, push. But GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.